Hello everybody, in today's video I am out here in Zion National Park at this really cool spot that I found on Google Earth. So essentially I went on Google Earth, I found this really cool peak out in the distance and I found a ridge line that I could potentially get up on and find some cool compositions. Now on this ridge line I knew there was going to be cool rocks, maybe some cool hoodoos, even some cool trees. I've now scrambled up here and I can see that it is a really great spot for photography and perfectly frames out the kind of peak in the distance that I want to get. Now I'm out here on a cloudy day, I've been waiting for this weather. You can see it is pretty cloudy out here. Um, I'm not sure if we are going to get any sunlight or a good sunset, but it's a good scouting mission nonetheless. So I want to just kind of show you guys my uh, walkthrough on how I decided on my composition, what I'm shooting, my settings I'm shooting at, and the whole nine yards. I want to show you guys all of it as well as show you this beautiful scene that's in front of me. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this camera around and jump right over so you can see what my mirrorless Sony camera is shooting right in front of me. So essentially this mountain here is the one that I wanted to shoot and you can see this ridge line kind of helps frame it really well. There's a lot of different areas you could go around here. Um, but what I really liked about this composition, you can see this tree right here really makes an interesting subject. So I was testing out compositions all along this ridge here. Originally I had it set up back here because I liked the angle that this gave. But the one thing I didn't like is we had this dead like bush right there which I really didn't like so I opted for moving up a little bit closer uh, to the tree and to my subject which is this mountain on the left and that is where I'm shooting at the moment so we'll see what happens with the clouds uh, but at the moment my composition is looking something like this if you can see that and as you can see on my composition uh, we've got the tree on the right side the mountain on the left and as I'm shooting this, I continue to open up the shutter speed. I want to make sure I have the two second timer on here and I have the flexible uh, focus point here. I want to make sure I focus on the tree, focus on the foreground, focus on the background, just so I have the whole scene in focus here. I've got my aperture at F9, which that's going to help me to make sure that um, I don't have a lot of background blur or foreground blur, depending on where my focus is, makes it a little bit easier to focus stack. Uh, the reason why I don't go higher than F9 is just because the sharpness of the lens uh, goes down quite a bit as you continue to travel above F11, F13 range. So I just have it at F9, and of course I have the ISO at 50. Shutter speed of this shot um, is doesn't matter, neither does the ISO, so the ISO is low and I'm just opening up the shutter speed as it continues to get darker as the night goes on. I'm uh, not really sure what's going to happen here, I was hoping I would be able to to get a little bit of light coming through the mountain right there and hitting these rocks. That doesn't seem like it's going to be the case, um, but as you can maybe see, it does look like there's a little bit of gap on the horizon that hopefully we will be able to get some nice light here for sunset and yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm really excited here. As you can see, it's a really cool spot that we've got up on this ridge. Now one thing I'm really utilizing in this composition is both contrast and leading lines. You can see here in the foreground I've got my leading lines going up into the scene, uh, starting kind of from the bottom left, moving up into the top right, moving into that tree. Now I'm also using contrast in my scene. You can see uh, the amount of contrast between the tree on the right side and the background. The tree is basically silhouetted, the background is really bright. That contrast is making that tree really pop and there's a reason why I don't want my composition to be much higher because then the tree would not contrast with the background as well. If I had the tree put up against the background of rocks, it's not going to contrast as well. You're not going to notice the tree as well. But because it's put up behind the sky or in front of the sky, um, there's a very, very large contrast between that bright whitish blue sky and that dark, dark tree. So contrast is so important in your scenes and I can't stress that enough. All right, well, we still don't have any light over here because the sun is now behind our peak, but... You can see there's some sun on the horizon there, hitting some of those distant peaks, which is a really, really good sign for these clouds lighting up because that means there's a gap in the horizon, allowing that light to come through over there. So I'm hopeful that we're gonna get some cool clouds and get a really cool shot out of this. I'll keep you guys updated. We've got about 15 minutes until true sunset. We've got some light catching over here as well and some clouds changing color here. Got the fixings to be a really good one out here. Alrighty guys, well it is starting to look pretty good, uh, to me at least. Beautiful gap on the horizon, some nice light coming through, and we're getting some clouds here. So I'm continuing to take photos here and adjust my shutter speed. Uh, as the, the night gets darker, I need to keep slowing that shutter speed down to allow enough light in. Otherwise, like if I was shooting at the settings I was shooting at earlier, I'd be looking at an incredibly dark photo like this. So I wanna open up that shutter 
and just make sure I'm not blowing out the highlights so I retain as much detail in these shadows as possible. Uh, on most cameras, you can also click, uh, it's usually up on the pad here until you get to the histogram. And this is the one that I like. Histograms on the bottom right. Um, so I want to continue to open that shutter speed essentially until um, some of the pixels on my histogram hit the far right, which they're not in this quite yet. So I'm shooting at about one fifth of a second F9 ISO 50. I'm gonna keep shooting and keep adjusting the settings as the clouds continue to come on through and as we continue to get more light and we'll see where the night takes us. So another thing that I might do in this scene is on my camera actually take another photo where I'm zoomed in a little bit more on this mountain to the left. That way potentially I can do a focal length blend later. So I don't usually do a lot of focal length blending, but in this photo I might wanna do it just because uh, that mountain is so far back and it's so much smaller than my tree in the foreground. And in reality, it's not actually smaller. It's obviously a lot larger, but because of the constraints of the environment that I'm working with and I don't have enough ridge behind me to get up a little bit higher, that's the way that it looks from the spot that I'm at now. So I can potentially focal length blend it later. And I may not do it, but I wanna take the photo just so I have it, so I have options when I'm sitting at my computer post-processing. Now for my focal length blend, all that I'm doing here is essentially just zooming in here to 28 millimeters. I'm on a 17 to 28 lens, so it works really well. So it's just gonna be the difference between 17 and 28 would be my focal length blend. Just pointing right at that mountain there and zooming in, and then I can easily flip my composition back to where I was before to continue taking photos. So I know I've been pointing out a lot of things to remember. The last thing here that I of course wanna remember is to keep moving my focus point around and to continue to take focus stacks so that I have multiple spots in focus. In this scene, uh, I want this rock right here in the foreground in focus, that tree that's in the midground in focus, and then that rock in the background in focus. And that should cover pretty much everything in my frame. So I'm continuing to just keep moving my focus point around. You can maybe see the little green square here, which is red now, and I can move it around. On the Sony a7R 4 I've got this little joystick here that I can push it around with, or if it was a little bit warmer, I'd have my gloves off and I would just be tapping on the screen. So a few different options here, but you cannot forget to take focus stacks when the light is really good because you are gonna want all of those focus stacks to have later when you are post-processing your images. All right guys, well the sunset is pretty much wrapping up. Now I get the joy of hiking back down this ridge to get back to my truck and head home, but beautiful night. So, so incredibly lucky to have this as my backyard and be able to capture amazing images like this uh, just less than an hour drive away from home so really nice sunset really excited to share this video with you guys and also edit this photo i may also do a video where i'm editing this photo if i do i will link that video here in the future thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video we will see you guys next time please let me know if you have any questions or comments and i'd be happy to answer them down below thanks so much guys Bye bye